to, to get a place in this country without a prickle tree on is impossible. If you think you have no prickly case, you've still got a budget about $10,000 a year. It's about preserving the environment and getting rid of this ugly plant. Prickly acacia is on the move. After a run of good seasons in the upper catchments of the Lake Eyre Basin, the dormant seeds have exploded into forests of young trees. Landholders who thought they had the weed under control are now feeling overwhelmed. Cespone is on the headwater of a Georgiana diamantana, so it's a huge seeds base that is spreading. We are doing buffer zones around boundaries and we are spending quite a bit of money on it, but it's a problem that's a bit too big for us. When we took over, we went through and we poisoned uh, everything. Uh, as far as I know, we had it free or nearly free of prickly acacia. We didn't really have a, a problem until 2000 flood, uh, probably flooded out a kilometre wide on most of the channels here and it germinated a, a huge number of prickly acacias. You'd be spending anywhere to thirty to fifty thousand dollars a year on prickle trees and you know, some years more. Peter Spence has decades of experience dealing with weeds and now works with landholder groups to develop weed strategies and undertake control works. The Desert Channel Group has invested in weed control for the last 10 years and the major lesson learnt and hence the discussion today is about the need for a highly planned approach, a long term plan and where possible landholders to work together on common strategies. Well I'm going to be taking back to the government the message that legislation's got to be changed in some areas to make certain that that green tape is eliminated so that we don't have a situation where these, these property owners can't destroy this plant right across their uh, aggregations. No one wants to destroy the uh, fabric of these watercourses or the land itself. This is about making sure the legislation's right so we can do a proper job. Desert Channels Group ran their Sesbania Innovation Day to showcase the latest knowledge and technology and to encourage the formation of weed control groups. We're primarily concerned with uh, sustainable management of the environment in the Desert Channels region and we provide commercial services to uh, landholders and, and to others. By banding together you get an economy of scale so instead of trying to control your weeds at a small property level, you're controlling it at the landscape level, so not only are you being strategic in the way that you're targeting the weeds, but you also uh, stand to get that economy of scale with the purchase of your chemicals and engaging contractors to operate, operate across several properties rather than individual contractors on individual properties. We're putting together a package to get landholders into groups to manage weeds at a landscape level. To assist with this approach, DCG has been working with government officers to refine the interpretation of satellite images to help identify where to focus control efforts. So all those blue colours there are assuming they are wooded vegetation. What we don't know at the moment is how much of that blue coloured are prickly acacia. Yet another innovative tool on display, and an Australian first, was an unmanned aerial vehicle which can apply both spray and residual pellets. If we, if we look at the examples here, we're looking at um, a target application or strategic application in areas where some of our conventional techniques just simply don't work or are not cost effective. So uh, examples would be where it's uh, particularly difficult uh, to access because the prickly acacia is, is so dense or that there is environmentally sensitive areas like water courses. About 120 people turned up here today and it goes to show how committed they are and how concerned they are because we're in the grip of drought in some of this country. We've got the lowest cattle prices we've probably seen since 1974 and these people are fair income top market operators and uh, they know that this woody weed, if it takes over anymore, some of these places have probably lost 10 or 20 percent productivity now. If we get a couple of more wet seasons and nothing's done, and as one of the speakers here today said, if nothing's done, well the situation will get progressively worse.